Hey, what is up guys? Wario Spug here, and basically today we're doing another custom tutorial of a quest. Uh, guns and opening gates and also doors that only staff can go through. Well, no and no, I will do the opening gates today, okay? So basically what I have set up here is that I have two models, okay? Because more than likely, gates are going to be models. And you know what? I'll actually bring them close to one another so it looks like a closed door. Basically what we're going to do today is that when we click this button, these two are going to open up kind of like that. And we're going to do this the easy way. So you see all the time, tweens, 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 tweens. Tweens are freaking amazing. I highly recommend that you learn them. But let's say that you don't want to take the time to learn them, similar to me in my early years of coding, and you just want to stick to the basics. Well, there's something that we can use that's called set primary part C frame, and we're able to use a for loop to change the increment, well, not change the increment, but rather increment the position or C frame of both of these bricks, meaning that we're just simply going to change the position in one direction and the other one in the other direction. It's not going to be teleporting. We're using a for loop so that it seems like that it's opening up naturally. And we're going to be using a click detector for this part. OK, so say that you have your model done and you made a button. OK, make sure that you have a click detector in your button. All right. And as you can see, just to also give you a heads up, I named my door door one and door two. All right, so door one, door two. All right, so I kind of separated them. You don't, uh, you don't necessarily have to if you're only doing one door. But for now, I'm just doing the two doors so that they open kind of like this when we click on a button. All right, and I'm also going to briefly describe how you can also make it so only a specific rank in a group uh, is able to click this button. I did it in a previous video, so that's why I said pre. So that's why I said very briefly. All right, so for starters, what we're going to do is that I already put in a click detector, and I'm going to put inside a script. Okay, now I'm not going to get to the script quite yet. Because first we need to do a very important step, we need to set the primary parts of these doors, basically what primary parts is that wherever these primary parts go, is where we will go, or I'm sorry, is where the model itself will go. It's kind of like the heart to the model, let's say I go to Walmart. And or I'm sorry, let's just say my heart goes to Walmart. Well, if my heart goes to Walmart, then that means that the rest of my body is probably at Walmart. I don't think that a heart can get up, go drive in a car, go to Walmart, get myself three bags of hot Cheetos and come back. No, my entire body needs to do that. And so that's kind of what the primary part does. And to do this, we simply click on our door and then go to the, our properties of our model door. And as you can see, there's actually primary part right here. You go ahead and click primary part and just click on uh, whatever part that you desire. Note that if these are the same doors, make sure that they are in fact the same primary part brick. So as you can see, this back one is my primary part. So then this one also has to be the back one. So therefore, it's going to be this one. So to make it easier, I would just rename it. But you know, I'm kind of shorthanding it because it's only two parts. If you have a big door, rename your back part to hinge or rename whatever it is your primary part to hinge or something like that. At least that's what I like to do. All right. And so now we can actually start scripting it. So now I could say local brick is equal to script.parent. Local click detector is equal to brick.click detector. All right. So basically what we're doing here is that we're saying, okay, script.parent is part. And I'm saying our click detector is brick.click detector. Now the last two things that we need is that we need our door one and our door two. Game.workspace.door2. Basically all we say here is that, hey, access our game go into a workspace, look for something that's called door one, bop door one. All right, go to our game, go into our workspace, look for something called door two, there's door two. And now time for the code. So the very first thing that we need to do is that we need to make sure that, uh, well, uh, the question that we always ask ourselves is what causes this script to start? That's basically all the scriptings. That's basically what all programming starts with. How, when, why do we want this script to run? Well, we want it to run when somebody clicks on the button. So to do this, we say click detector dot mouse click connect function. All right. And now what we do is that I'm going to make a for loop. So I'm going to say for I is equal to zero to 50 do. Now this is the, the meat of it. So if you don't remember what for loops do, this is going to run 51 times. All right. So you may want to start off with one if you want it to run exactly 50 times. I just say zero because I'm so used to Python. All right, so basically what I do here, so let me do print I. All right, and I'll do wait 
you know, 0.1. Let's see what happens when I do that. So if I hit play here, you know, basically it'll run the code 51 times and it should print out all the numbers between 0 and 51 as it does such down here. All right, and bam. Oh no, it's actually 50. So it does run. So it runs 51 times, but only goes till 50. Sorry about that. So zero to 50, it prints out all the numbers and basically this code ran 50 times. Well, we the reason why we run this code 50 times is because we want it so, so that the door looks like that it's opening very smoothly. If we don't run this 50 times, then it's only gonna move a very small distance or it's gonna be very choppy. So I would do right around zero to 50, zero to 25. Now, next I say door one set primary part C frame. Now this is where incrementing comes in. What we need to say is that we need to say door one dot primary part dot C frame plus vector three dot new. I'm gonna say negative 0 0.100 just for starters. So basically what we do here is that we take the heart of our door, all right, and we take its current position and add a new position to it. So technically what this should do is let me whip out the old X, F3X, let me do 0 0.1, is that it will move to the left here 50 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, blah, 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 so on, so on, so on. But what it'll look to us is a smooth opening door because it's going to look like it's technically a teleporting door if you think about it, but it does it at such a small rate so fast that you won't even notice. That's essentially what all programming, uh, well, like, that's essentially what tweens are. They're just, they just look really hecking smooth. So we do the exact same thing, but for our second door, we simply just change door one to door two, and we, and we flop, flip flop the sign over here. So we delete the subtraction sign, because if I were to have both of these as a subtraction sign, they would both go this way. But if I have one of them as subtraction, one of them addition, then they'll kind of spread out just like that. Now for the moment of truth, let's go ahead and test it. Watch it, watch it so that I get absolutely smacked with both of these not working. Let's go and take a look. So I go and click it. Alrighty, so what happened? They teleported, right? We forgot to add a wait statement, 0 0.01. Because basically what it did is that it ran it so fast that it just teleported from one position to another. What we need to do is slow it down by saying simply just, hey, Wait a hundredth of a second before you move on to the next one. And so now this is what it looks like. There you go. A nice, smooth door. Now let's say that you want it to close. No problem. All right. So basically, this is how you would have it close on its own. You would say, wait to take your same script and simply just flip the numbers. Zero. So 0 0.1 is now positive for door one negative 0 0.1 is now negative for door two. Let's go and take a look. I'm going to hit play here. And I'm sorry that I'm moving a little bit fast here. I actually have a lesson to teach in just a, quite a few minutes. All right, so I open it. It waits two seconds, and then it closes on its own, going back to its original position. All right, now let's say that you wanted to do, uh, as I said, we were going to do like get rank and group. You would just simply say if, uh, well, first of all, it's able to detect the player. So it's able to detect who touches the uh, who touches the click detector. So you would just put player inside of here. If player get rank in group, group ID, you would put in your group ID in here, is greater than or equal to desired rank, I'll, I'll put. So let's say that you wanted only the owner. So let's say you wanted only the owner to have access to this. You would just simply say 255. Let's say you wanted your co-owner and your owner to have access to this. You would say 254. If you have questions about this part, I made a video, I think it was two videos ago, um, of me explaining more about get rank and group, but this is how we would do it. All right, and it's the same thing for, uh, it's the same thing for, whatchamacallit, um, I, I can't, I can't think of it. Uh, but anyway, uh, then there is also a bonus little part here. Nope, that's not it. Uh, someone also wanted to learn how to do a touch brick instead of a click detector. Well, uh, so to do a touch open door, 
you would simply just change here. So what I would do is that I would add a invisible brick here. All right, and you probably want to add debounce. I don't want to do it this time, but here. And like I said, I'm moving a little fast because, you know, I don't want this to go. I don't want to go crazy here. All right, and so basically what I would do, get rid of this local touch brick. Touch brick is equal to game dot workspace. I'll rename this. I'll rename our brick that we put into touch brick. Game dot workspace dot touch brick. And then basically instead of here, you would say touch brick dot touched connect function. And then what you need also is a debounce. So local debounce equals true. If debounce then debounce equals false. All right. Then basically what it'll do is it will wait for this code to finish. And then after that, you would just say debounce. Uh, well, I'll put it inside the script. So I'll put it inside of here. Debounce equals true. And let's see if it works. So now this is how you would do a touch function door instead of a click detector door. All right. So now I would come on over here. I would touch it. It would open up. I'd walk through and then it would close and then I'll touch it again. It'll open up and then it will close. Alrighty, and that's all that we'll learn today. All right, guys, so we learned about a click detector door, primary part, C-frame, primary parts, for loops, and debounce. So let me show you what will happen, actually, before we, go, before we go away just right now. Let's see what will happen if I get rid of debounce, and uh, let me show you its importance. So debounce basic, oh, hello, I have a error, actually, so let me get rid of one of the ends here. There we go. All right, so let's say I got rid of the debounces and I didn't have that for a touch function. Basically, what would happen is, is that it would be like, all right, there's now no cooldown. Bye, doors. They're going so far away. Uh-oh, the doors are coming back. Go, doors, go. And as you can see, my game is already lagging up a little bit. And as you can see, the doors are very broken. So that's why it's very important for, for touch functions that we have a debounce because what it does is that it gives a doors a cooldown that the script won't activate until this script ends. All right, and then that's all that we will learn today. If you guys have any questions, post in the comments. I'll be happy to answer. And like I said, there is a better method to do this and it's called tweens, but this is just for video purposes in case, you know, if you're a beginner, I highly recommend using this script instead of tweens because tweens can get confusing some sometimes. But like I said, take the time to learn tweens. They're a lot better than this. But this is just a method that you're able to use. All right. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any video suggestions, post it down in the comments. If you guys have any problems, put it down in the comments, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.